This is Taiwan Bound, the English language podcast of Tel Aviv University. Please welcome your host, Ido Aroni, Tel Aviv University's graduate, member of the Board of Governors, lecturer, writer, and veteran diplomat. Welcome to yet another episode of Tau Unbound. I'm Ido Aharon, your host, and today we're going to have a different format than usual. We're going to have a discussion with the senior executive from the university, Amos Elad, my dear friend, and with Shir Shachar and Aviv Kurnas, two students that will uh, uh, shed some more light about what's happening to our student body during the war, during the war and what is being done by the university. So... Uh, welcome to the studio, Thank Shir you. and Aviv and Amos. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. I'd like to start with you guys. We'll start with you, Shir. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Tell us where October 7th met you and what happened to your life since then. Okay, so nice to meet you all. Uh, so I'm Shir, as uh, you mentioned, 28 years old, uh, originally from Mevaseret Now I'm living in Tel Aviv. Um, a master's student in Ronit Sachi in our laboratory uh, in the Faculty of Medicine. Um, so October 7, for me, was a nightmare, as for all of us. And I started... Where, where were you when it happened? In Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Yeah, I was in my brother's apartment, uh, babysitting the dog for a month. <laughs> uh, so the first week I had the dog with me. Were any, everywhere. were any of the people that you know personally affected by, by the events? Yeah, I had a, a soldier that was serving with me that died in the, was murdered, sorry, in the party, in the novel party. Um, so that's that. And a lot of friends that was in the army. I was a scouter in the Gaza border. So, when so I was in- to our listeners and our viewers, I'll just mention that Professor Feinauer was a guest at the podcast, and yeah. please go check the episode with her, which is extremely important. So tell us a little bit about your academic work. What do you do as part of your academic work? So I'm researching uh, ovarian cancer. I'm a master's student, as I mentioned. I'm in the lab all day long, every day, um, hoping to find a different way to target a ovarian cancer with nanoparticles. So, so you are uh, trained and uh, to become a practicing researcher. Now, tell us how did you deploy the same skills that you develop in the laboratory in your volunteer work? So, in my reserve, I'm a researcher in the um, learning group of the ground forces. Our aim is to make sure that. Um, events that happen before won't happen again. So everything that we see, we want it not to happen again. If it's force to force or anti-craft against force or stuff like that, we don't want it to happen. So your your specialty as a reservist, and I'm assuming that you were called in right after the war started. So your job is basically to analyze situations and to draw conclusions so that it will not happen again. Exactly. Now, uh, and I don't want you to tell us anything you're not allowed to share with us, but give us some sense, if you can, of the kind of stuff that you're dealing with that is that is having impact for the future. I think everything, you can see it after the break that was in the um, fighting, that lots of things has changed. If it's the um, connection between the ground forces and the air force, which is amazing in this uh, um, war and everything. It's from how many breaks a soldier gets to how to um, deal with certain stuff, a certain a type of uh, uh, machines and stuff like that. So everything from the bottom to top. Well, I have so many questions to ask you, but we need to move forward with this with this program. So, Aviv, tell us about yourself a little bit. So, I'm Aviv Kulnas, as you said, uh, 24 years old, now lives in Tel Aviv, originally from Kiryat Ono, not too far from here. And October 7th actually found me in uh, New York. I landed on October 6th. I work in public diplomacy uh, to give lectures uh, in Canada and New York about Israel and promoting Israel's image. And we were supposed to start October 8th and then... Everything's changed on October 7th, and we changed our program. And at the beginning of the war, I was there on campuses, different campuses around the U.S., talking to the students and listening to them. 
And then uh, I was called in for reserve three weeks in, and since then I'm uh, still in reserve. And what do you, what do you, to the extent you can share with us, tell us what you do in, in reserve. I'm in the Israeli Air Force in an airborne position, um, doing intelligence and other things that we can uh, say here. Um, yeah, flying around, trying to help as much as we can. Now, on your public diplomacy work, uh, w what was the purpose of that? speaking tour that you were supposed to do on October 6th. So I was, I'm, I'm working for an NGO that does um, promoting Israel's image around the world through its people and so we were trying to bring um, more knowledge about Israel and different things that are happening around Israel and different cultures um, to those campuses and communities and um, we changed our programs on October 7th so so we could be relevant for what is happening. And here in the university, I study political science and communications, and so it all comes together for me. Now, I should add that Shir and Aviv are two of over 5,000 students that Tel Aviv University has right now in the Army. Uh, and Amos El Ad, the senior vice president of Tel Aviv University and really one of the leaders and the visionaries in the, in the university under the leadership of our president, Ariel Porat, is fully consumed and preoccupied by the need to take care of our students. So, Amos, I'd like to turn to you and ask you uh, your view from where you are, where October 7th met you, and, and how did the university respond to this monumental challenge? Thank you. Thank you, Ida. It's really moving to, to see you too here. Um, so the university actually from 9 a.m. actually on October 7th already started to respond. Everyone was shocked. Personally, I was at home. I was supposed to fly to Australia the same day. I had a 12 o'clock uh, flight. Um, I, until like probably like 11 a.m. I didn't realize that I'm not flying uh, to, to visit our friends in Australia. But 9 a.m. already, uh, the Dean of Students and uh, the Rorit and the team already started and opened uh, uh, mental health or uh, online clinics and really uh, first respond basically a center for the students and for the community because no one knew what's going on actually, but we knew that there is need to be some sort of response. So that's something already 9 a.m. October 7th, the university uh, opened that opened that uh, call center with psychologists, with therapists, in order to to have um, some sort of response. Uh, immediately after, we we understood the, the magnitude of this disaster, and uh, so we basically did two main uh, or maybe three main events. One of them is uh, really opening and, and recruiting uh, psychologists and uh, therapists that will be able to deal with this terrible disaster that we're, uh, we're having and having students be able to have treatments and call and those uh, basically line of uh, treatments uh, throughout the months that happened. Uh, the second thing that we did was uh, opening, and this is something that is happening right now, uh, a post-trauma center. Um, unfortunately, in Israel, we have so many of uh, traumatic and, and post-traumatic. Uh, it's not only soldiers, but soldiers and civilians. And uh, the situation in Israel, uh, even before the war, was 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 not a good one for the mental health system in Israel. So our team, headed by Professor Yair uh, Bar Chaim, uh, really started and opened by recruiting the best of the best minds. Uh, and volunteers and people from our staff, from our, from our uh, medical school and from our psychology and social uh, welfare department, all those units really re were recruited in order to try and professionally open a national center that will work and is already started from January 1st, already working with the IDF, with the Army, with the Health Ministry, with Bituach Rumi, Social Security, and together with them accepting and starting treating the post-traumatic uh, uh, people. Um, the reason that it was so urgent that we cannot have those people that are suffering from post-traumatic uh, stress left alone. Because we know this is the, one of the worst cases and worst, worst uh, things that, uh, um, I would say, mental health uh, syndromes, that, that if you don't treat it at the same time or the, immediately, it can really uh, hurt you and, and have uh, bad consequences. So this is something that I'm, I'm very proud of the university as you said, led by President Porat and Professor Bachaim, uh, understood the magnitude of this disaster, 
And now we're talking about between 1,000 to 3,000 uh, uh, people that will be treated during this year here in the university. The clinics are already open in Tel Aviv University to receive those people. Now, um, I also understand that the university introduced uh, also a new idea regarding the tuition of the students. Yeah. So, with the Director General Gadi uh, and, 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 the, and the team, there was a decision, first of all, not to charge the students for the dorms uh, for those months, because they're not here, they're not coming, they're in the war. As you said, almost 6,000 of our students are in the reserve duty, active reserve duty. So, you have to take care of those students. So, immediately, what we decided, we decided we're giving them, uh, even without even even any philanthropic help, we decided to give them uh, scholarships. Uh, uh, it, in the beginning, it was uh, a little, uh, I think it was a thousand shekels per each student that was already went out and to cover their tuition. Then uh, afterwards, the, we announced that up to 9,000 shekels per each student, if they're um, over, I think, 60 days, or I think that was decided, and the university is really actively doing that. And this is a lot to, uh, in, in uh, uh, I think, a lot in respect of our donors around the world. We have good friends around the world that are supporting this uh, cause. Um, we understood that uh, we have to take care of you guys. <laughs> uh, uh, very emotional to say that, but uh, to to understand that you are, you guys are there for us, uh, serving. And then when you're coming back, we wanted to make sure that you guys have scholarships, that you have some sort of thank you and gratitude, if it's with tuition or if it's with dormitories or anything that we can help uh, to help you. And also our friends around the world uh, really understood this because they're there and and this is our the Jewish state and this is uh, something which is not only Israel this is something that really and Ido knows it about a lot because you talk about it all over the world this this war really united the Jewish world and when we're talking about unification it's also understand that we need to take of the future of Israel and part of the future of Israel is you guys <laughs> our students our future leaders in Israel our future maybe politicians or maybe leaders in Israel, and of course amazing scientists and this is what we need to do and make sure you guys have scholarships you guys have someone who take care of you i think that's that was the idea i totally agree with you and by the way i must say to you also as a as a parent of uh children around your ages um a bit older than you but you know we were quite concerned about your generation uh, we call them the TikTok generation, right? <laughs> too much time on the phone, too much time playing video games. And uh, and boy, did you guys uh, rise to the occasion. Um, it's incredible to see the dedication, the devotion, the bravery, and the camaraderie, right? Uh, so a lot of people talk about the divisiveness in Israeli society. But what, what I'm hearing from the young men and women in the field recruited by the army is that the, the unity in the underground is, is real. And, um, and, and you see that in the performance of the army. And I should also mention to our listeners and our viewers that public opinion surveys in Israel indicate that the level of trust the Israeli public has in them is very high, much higher than any other sector uh, an Israeli society. But um, I wanted to ask you both, Shir and Aviv, a question about um, your brothers and sisters overseas. Mm -hmm. We have um, a, an unprecedented crisis today, especially in North America, but it goes beyond North America. I have family in South Africa, and I'm talking to people in Australia, and I'm talking to people in Europe. It's all over the Western world, where Jewish people feel unsafe, uh, the war exposed a mega crisis in higher learning institutions that were exposed as institutions that instead of teaching and focusing on learning became platforms for ideological indoctrination. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened at Harvard University. That's what happened at Penn. Both presidents resigned as a result of what was revealed. Uh, and I'd like to start with you, Shir. What would you say to your brothers and sisters in the world about the opportunity to come to Israel and study here, right here at Tel Aviv University? I think, first of all, it's a great opportunity. Uh, in our lab, we have 
lots of foreign stu students um, and it's the best place to be. Like Tel Aviv, it's the best city in the world. Um, I thought of going to, to study afterwards in London because I have British uh, citizenship and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay here and I'm not going to move to a different country from my point of view. So I, I'm saying to my brothers and sisters around the world, come here. Um, it's a great school, not just this personally, the uh, Tel Aviv University. It's a great environment. But And we have here at Tel Aviv University the largest on-site campus in the country. So we have between students and, 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 and faculty and administration over 40,000 people here, yeah. right? Yeah. And we're in the northern part of Tel Aviv, those of you who don't know. And, and what do you have to say, Aviv, to your brothers and sisters overseas? Would you be as enthusiastic as she? 100%. I would say that this is your home forever and ever. It's an amazing place to study in. Um, I was just, as I said, at Penn after everything that happened. And a lot of the students there asked me about where am I studying and how does it look and how does it feel. And it really is the best place to be in, in a beautiful city. It's safe. It's amazing, and there's amazing people all around campus. I really do. You, I do you believe that they will actually, when when you know, in the moment of truth, they will actually consider coming to Israel to study seriously? Yeah, I think so. I have a lot of friends from the U.S. who are studying right now. Just started the semester here at Tel Aviv University and other places around Israel. But I can just say that I really think that people should come, and they do think of coming here and studying here. Terrific, terrific. I'm, I'm, I must say that I'm uh, inspired by this conversation, by hearing your enthusiasm and, and your message to your brothers and sisters. And, you know, most of our listeners and viewers are friends of Tel Aviv University from all over the world. And, uh, and I'd like to turn to you, Amos, and if there's any message that we would like to convey to our brothers and sisters who support the university day in and day out all over the world. Yes, either. thank you. As I said before, I think uh, if it wasn't clear before, before this uh, October 7th, before the war, I think now it's it's clear that we are one and, and we are staying together. We are united. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a choice. <laughs> we don't have a choice. Uh, but it's, it's, it's something that we have to remember, even though even after this terrible war will go away, we will have to remember this and stay united. And if you ask me what is my message, my message is that we have to support each other. It's not only that our friends from around the world are supporting Israel, and it's important for us that they, they, they will continue that, that we are together in so many ways. As you said, we want their children to come here and study, because they'll understand the real Israel. And they can stay here and make Aliyah, or not, or come back and, and live as, as an amazing uh, citizens in wherever they are. But we want to do research together. You know, I'm so sure we'll do amazing research with someone in Stanford or in Yale or whatever it is. So this is something we want to strengthen. My message is that if we continue in this path, we have to be strong and be together. And together, we can make this university amazing. I mean, this is something which, because of the philanthropic help, because of what they're doing, because of their help right now in the war, we are able to give a scholarship to the students, to the soldiers who are coming back from the war. Because their help and research, we are able to, to provide for sheer amazing equipment for laboratories or build a building or a laboratory. This is something that for us uh, as a university, it's something which is crucial. And I also believe a university or any university in Israel is something which is one of the foundations that will really uh, help Israel progress for the future. Because we see them as the next generation, we see science, we, we, know, we all hear about startup nation and high tech, we all hear about innovation, we don't hear all about you know, what the, our engineering faculty is doing and providing amazing things for our soldiers in the war or for the IDF. But all of this is really basic for the future of Israel and for the Sometimes I use the word survival, but now I don't want to use this word right now, survival, because we are in a survival mode all the time. But when I look about the future, I want to see success. I want to see excellence. We're talking, when we talk about Tel Aviv University, we're talking about excellence. The excellence that will provide and will lead the future for Israel. And this is what our university stands for. 
Uh, and when, when I talk to our friends around the world, I talk about them being part of the success of this excellent effort that the university is doing. And that would, I would ask for them. And, and to support your point, I would remind everybody that uh, when you look at Israel's short history, mm-hmm. but you know, the Zionist movement in general, ev- after every major challenge, it was always followed by a, a very long period of growth. And I think that this is what Amos is talking about, growth. You're talking about um, working together as one to allow the growth of the university even further. And so this this has been really an inspirational conversation. I want to thank you, Shir and Aviv, and of thank course you. to you, Amos, for everything that you do, for you, for your great contribution in the field, for your great contribution when you're back here uh, on the bench studying, and of course, Amos, for everything that you do, and I know how hard you work for this university day in and day out. And, and to our viewers and our listeners, I just want to say you just heard it from them. Come to Tel Aviv University because here it's about learning. It's not about social engineering. <laughs> here it's about learning. It's not about ideological indoctrination. And so with that message from Tel Aviv, uh, I'd like to say goodbye to you until our next episode. Keep safe.